Hi everyone, it's Tim here. So I realise it's been quite a while since I've done a nerd spreadsheet video. So what I thought I'd do is I would take you through the process that I go through to download and process the uh, half hourly data from Octopus um, for both the import and the export. And I've prepared a little sort of template spreadsheet that you can uh, grab and use for your, for your own purposes if you want to do the same sort of thing. And I'll just walk you through that spreadsheet. It's very simple and um, you can adapt it to your needs. So yeah, without further ado, let's uh, take a look at the spreadsheet. Okay, so you may recognize this particular chart from my most recent stats video. This is the um, import and export binned up into the uh, the half hourly buckets. And uh, I'll just show you how I um, how I do that sum and uh, um, all the other calculations that, uh, that I uh, did to um, calculate our final savings and all that stuff over here. But um, to start with, let's go to the Octopus website and uh, see where you can download the data and uh, what format that's in and how you then get that into this particular spreadsheet. So let's pop over to the Octopus website now. So this is the standard Octopus account front page, as it were, and uh, you've got a bunch of tabs here, but the one we want is the Explore My Energy Use. So we click on that. And that brings you to um, just this page here where you can see a sort of sum brief summary of your um, energy statistics for the last few days. And, but what we want is this bit here where it says get your geek on. Um, and it gives you, if you've got both import and export, it gives you two options here. Um, and the one we want is, um, well, both of these, but let's start with the import, which is the one that just says electricity and followed by the, um, the meter number. And we need to change the date. So let's take the example that I did for um, May. So click on the 1st of May. It takes a little while for it to, to grab the, the data, um, but once it's done that, this um, button here will light up like that, and you just click download your smart data. So that then downloads a file called consumption.csv. Now that stands for comma separated variable, and I'll show you what that looks like. So let me show you in the folder. So this is my downloads folder, and you can see that it's uh, it's popped up in there as consumption.csv. Now what I like to do is open this up in a text editor, so it doesn't really matter what you use here. So I'm gonna open it up in uh, Notepad. And that brings up this file. It may look a little bit different for you, um, depending on your system, but it doesn't really matter what the uh, what you use, um, as long as you can just open it up as a, as a text file. And you can see it's just um, a series of, of uh, columns here separated by uh, comma. So you've got consumption in kilowatt hours, start and end, and then you've got the actual values here. So that's the consumption in kilowatt hours, and then the start and an end time. So what we simplest thing what we're going to do is we're going to do Control A. Now that's that's select all. And then I'm going to do Control C, which is uh, copy. And then I'm going to go over back to my spreadsheet. So let me do that. So here we go. And I've got down here these two tabs, import and export, and, and then the calculation tab here. So we want the import tab. And I'm also going to get rid of that there. So we've got a bit more room. So I've already got the data in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to grab all this and I'm just going to delete it. So the next step is to paste in our data. So um, you can either do Control V or if you uh, right click you can do paste here for example and you see it drops it all in oh I should um, specify that this is a G sheet so Google Sheets uh, spreadsheet um, the same sort of thing works with Excel you can um, you can convert this spreadsheet to an Excel file if you like but uh, um, all the formulas are exactly the same but um, uh, the reason I've done G sheets is because um, uh, if you've got a, a Google account, you can open this up. You don't need Excel or anything like that. So, uh, so that's uh, that's why I've chosen to do it this way rather than using Excel. Um, but you can see, once I've pasted that in, you get this little menu button here for the formatting. And if you go up to split text to columns, it will automatically find the commas and split them up into uh, the different columns. So now you can see the, that text file has now been converted into the um, the columns and the rows um, as appropriate. And I'm going to do the same thing with um, the export data. So let me go back to Octopus. And I'm going to switch this to electricity export. Again, it's going to take a, a few seconds to find the data in your own time. There we go. Download smart data. And once again, go show in folder here. Now you can see it's let, called it exactly the same name, so consumption, but now because it's a, a duplicate name for the existing file, it's given it this uh, bracket one. So it's not consumption, this is export because that's what we just downloaded. If you want to rename that, um, then go ahead, um, but it's easy enough to just say uh, open with um, notepad again. And now we've got uh, the same thing again. We can do control A to select everything, and control C to copy it. And then we'll go back to our template. And I'm going to get rid of that again. 
And this time I'm going to go to the Export tab. And I'll show you what I did here to select all these. I held Shift and Control, and then left, uh, or right all the way to select all of them, and then down selects everything like that. Um, you can select that however you like, um, and then hit Delete. The alternative is to just click on the little cell at the top there, and that will select everything, and then you can hit Delete again if you prefer. So let's go back up to the top and hit Control V, and do the same, convert that into columns, like that. So uh, there's one complication here in that when we selected the, the start date, it pulled every half hour from that start date on until basically the current date. So uh, what, we might, what we're going to find here is if I go right to the bottom, you can see it goes up to uh, the 15th of June, which is um, the date that I'm recording this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to scroll up and I'm going to find um, the end of May. So let's scroll up a few, a few rows to there right so there we go we've got the end of may so i'm going to select this this row here shift control down and delete so that just makes sure that uh, we don't have any uh, data for june contaminating the uh, the date the data that we want to process so let's just double check there we go yep yeah, half half past 11 to midnight on the uh, the first of june there and we're going to do the same with the export so let's scroll down and find where it switches to june about there so let's select that row and select all of those and delete. And there we go. That looks right. So half past 11. Perfect. Right. So we can forget about these two now. Um, those are done. So let's go over to the calculation tab. OK, so you can see on the calculation tab, I've basically just copied across the start date times from the import tab. So uh, you can see if I highlight this first cell, it says equals import B2. So if we go back to import and we can see the B2 column is just the start column here. So it's just copying this, this first um, uh, date time column over into the calculation tab. And then I'm doing a bit of formatting here. I'll explain that in a second. And then again, we're pulling in the data from uh, the import tab for this import column, um, which is A2. So if I go back over there, you can see it's just this, this consumption column here. And um, for the export, we do the same thing, but from the export uh, tab. So you can see um, this first column, uh, A2, and then downwards. And that's basically just the, the export data for the half hours. So that's all we need for, that's all we're doing, pulling in the data from those two tabs. The rest of it is all just calculations that I'm doing. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm converting this, this odd, oddly formatted string that's supposed to represent a date time. But unfortunately, Excel and G Sheets doesn't understand that it's a date time. So we have to do, do a little bit of formatting first. So what happens in this column where I've said formatted start, I'm taking that start value and I'm stripping out this capital T here, and I'm stripping off the plus zero one uh, colon zero zero. So I'm just getting rid of that by using this formula here. And that gives you a, a much nicer formatted string that represents an actual date time. And then I'm doing an additional calculation here, which just converts that string into the hours and the minutes. Um, and that's all that that's doing. And I've added this if error here, um, because occasionally the um, the data is missing a half hour. So if I scroll right to the bottom here, I've made enough space in this particular um, box here for 31 days of, of um, 48 half hours. But you can see there's a missing one. Now somewhere in here, there is a, a missing half hour. Now I don't know why it happens, but occasionally smart meters just don't send a particular reading. So you may find that every now and again, you'll miss one or two half hour chunks. Just nothing, nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. So what I've done is I've just, to make sure that there, there's no problems in this last row, I've added, um, where is it now, this if error, and that just replaces any errors in the calculation with a with a blank cell. So that's all that does. Um, the rest of it is just, um, is just lookups and other stuff. So if I scroll up again back to the top, you can see what I'm doing here. Um, we've, this, this is the data that we've imported, and then I'm also calculating what the, um, the tariff for this this particular half hour is based on the um, the flux tariff periods. So um, what I've done is th in this section over here, I've set up the flux tariff in this box here. So all of these purple cells are ones that you can enter your own um, values in. So what I've got is a, a start and an end block, and I've got the import and the export tariff for that block. And um, what we then do is we do a lookup on on the values in uh, in this table to populate these two values here, the uh, the import tariff and the export tariff. 
uh, and you can see that well, that's all that's doing it's just taking um, a VLOOKUP of the the half hour that we've calculated before and it just looks it up in this in this little table here and then obviously once we've got the the um, number of kilowatt hours that we've uh, imported or exported and we've got the tariff in pence per kilowatt hour we can convert that into a, a cost obviously very easily by just doing this calculation which is taking the kilowatt hours multiplied by the pence per kilowatt hour and then multiplying it by 0 0.01 which converts it from pence into pounds and we're doing exactly the same thing with the exports you can see it's just the same uh, formula but with the different columns and because we've got every single um, cost for every single half hour and all of the export as well you, we can then calculate um, what that is in terms of the total for the month so in the in the cells here all I'm doing is I'm just summing all of the values in that column and I'm doing the same thing uh, in this column as well and that tells me that the sum total of my imported energy for the month was £77.25 and the sum total of exported energy earned me £195.96 and you'll, you'll have seen that in the stats video um, that I put out recently if, uh, if you watched that already. Um, and then we can do some other clever stuff. So, I mean, those are obviously the, the most important values, but we can do a bunch of other stuff. Um, and that's what I've done to create this particular chart here. I've actually um, effectively just done a sum over every single one of these half hours. So any time that it says, you know, 6.30, I add it to the equivalent 6.30 value here, for example, um, for both import and export. And I do that over the, every single day for each month because what I've done is I've taken every single half hourly block here and then I've done a, it's called a sum if basically. Um, so it sums all of the data, um, whoops, let me just uh, highlight that again and scroll across. It sums all of the data in this particular column, which is the export kilowatt hours, and it only adds them together if they're equal to this little block here where it says uh, 130 in this particular example so it's only taking every cell where that represents ha uh, half past one in the morning and it adds it all together and you can see well for this particular example the export is zero because it's in the middle of the night so we're not exporting anything um, but we are importing some uh, during the the night this is uh, very very small values but then you can see at 230 it's so well at two o'clock it suddenly jumps up so this is where we're we're importing um, a lot of uh, a lot of energy um, and you can see what I've also done here is I'm multiplying it by this little um, label called flip and I've set that to minus one and that just makes makes it um, negative and so it flips it on the flips it onto the negative part of this axis here so that's all that's doing so um, we've got the four columns here the import kilowatt hours the export kilowatt hours the import tariff and the export tariff and so you can see I've set up two axes here the um, the energy in kilowatt hours and then the tariff on the right hand side in pence per kilowatt hour so that's what those two uh, different sets of, uh, of lines represent um, and if you if you don't want the chart to look like that if you want it the other way around for example you can go through here and say let's flip that to the positive so put one instead of minus one so that flips that one up and we could put minus one here and that will flip that one down and we can do the same with the tariff as well so we can set that to zero and that will flip the, that tariff up and this one oops zero what am I talking about um, we need to set that set that to one and that will flip that up to the positive axis and uh, minus one here will flip the export down underneath so what you may find is that you need to change the axes uh, limits here so I've set these up so that they're hard coded but you can just sort of double click on these and bring up the axis limits here so I've set this to minus 120 to 120 but if you've got more or less import then you might want to change those just so that it completely encompasses your your data uh, for example um, but the reason I've done that is so that the zero line is the same on both the tariff and the the kilowatt hours um, otherwise you find that maybe the tariff is sort of floating up here somewhere and it doesn't line up properly so by defining the 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 positive the, the minimum and maximum values then it you can guarantee that it's always um, you know right down the middle there um, but I like it this way around with um, with the import uh, on the negative and the export on the positive so I'm just going to flip those back to the way that I, I had them before and that's the that's the view that we saw um, in my stats video so I'm not going to go into too much about all of the rest of these calculations um, 
the, uh, the the very simple one here is just calculating the number of days. You can see it just counts the total number of cells that we've got and divides it by 48. So you can see for May, we've got 31 days. If you um, had obviously uh, um, June's data in in, uh, in here, for example, then you would find that um, if I scroll right to the bottom here, then you will be missing you know, the, the, the last day of this particular table. So it will count up all of the empty cells and say, right, okay, that's... Um, uh, that's only 30 days, so you don't need to do that calculation. And then there's a bunch of other stuff here. Purple is inputs, yellow is outputs, um, white is just some sort of intermediate calculation. And you can see basically these are all of the, the, the values that I showed in my um, stats video. Um, I do ha actually have a confession to make. I made a slight mistake in my stats video. Uh, don't tell anyone, but um, the savings are actually slightly higher than I reported because what I hadn't done was I hadn't accounted for the fact that obviously we're currently using an electric vehicle instead of a petrol car. We replaced our petrol car with the, with the electric car, which means that we no longer have to spend any money on petrol, of course. So although I had um, added in the amount of electricity into our into this calculation to show how much we'd spent on charging the car at home what i hadn't done was account for the fact that we would have spent um, more money filling up with petrol so i've done and i've added an additional calculation and you can see um there's a few sort of helper columns here so we're currently getting about four miles per kilowatt hour with our with our fiat 500 uh the car that we replaced um that with was was a honda jazz and we were getting about 50 miles per gallon with that um, and then um, you can. S I've got another column here, which is the um, cost of petrol at the moment in our local um, supermarket, which is one pound forty per litre. And I've done a little calculation here based on um, how many um, miles per kilowatt hour we we're currently getting out of our car, and how many kilowatt hours we used to to charge the car to give us an estimate of how many miles we did. Um, or rather Kat did, because this is basically her commuter car. So she did 460 miles in, in the month of May. Um, and if she'd done 460 miles in the petrol car, it would have cost us £58.55 in petrol. Um, on the standard tariff, the standard flexible tariff from Octopus, that would have cost us £37.73 uh, to charge it up at the... Um, um, you know, at the at the the price cap at the moment, um, but it actually only cost us twenty two pounds sixty four um, to charge the car on the flux rate using the overnight nineteen point seven pence per kilowatt hour. So, um, if you take the difference between the flux cost and the um, petrol cost, we actually saved thirty five pound ninety one. Uh, so uh, that's something I hadn't accounted for. Uh, so, in fact, our total saving for the month is two hundred seventy two pounds seventy five. Um, I've reported it was um, about one hundred two hundred fifty one pounds. Uh, previously because obviously I had accounted for the cost of, um, uh, of charging the car on the standard flux tariff but not for the cost of um, filling up the car so I've I've rejiggered re that calculation slightly and um, it comes out at a slightly higher value at uh, 272 pounds so that's that's cool um, I'm not going to issue a you know a formal correction uh, for that particular video but uh, in future videos um, I will use this calculation to uh, to tell the whole picture as it were um right so that's all of the all of the spreadsheet i told you it wasn't too complicated compared to some of my other previous ones if you've seen those videos you'll know what i mean um but there you go that's uh, that's it there's not too much to it probably the most important thing is really this uh, this calculation here which makes it easy to convert the uh you know the the weird date time that octopus uses into something that's more um compatible with excel and and g sheets and uh, so yeah that's uh, just thought i'd show you that because it's a neat little trick um if you want to grab this spreadsheet um I'll put a link to it in the description and what you then do is you go up to the file tab here and go to make a copy. Now what that will do is that will it will probably ask you to save that to your Google Drive um, and uh, if you've got a YouTube account that means you've already got a Google Drive account whether you know it or not. So you just make a copy and save that to your Google Drive and you'll be able to open that up and um, and fiddle with the data in, in the way that I've described. In, you know, Add the data into the import and the export tab and do your own calculations. You, know, you can get rid of all of this stuff if you want. You don't need any of that. You can um, do, do your own thing and uh, yeah, fill your boots. So uh, hopefully you found that useful. Um, feel free to uh, subscribe if you if you haven't already. And um, yeah, if you're not with Octopus and you want to make use of Octopus's data, um, please feel free to use my referral code as well. Um, a number of you have done so already, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, but yeah, if you're not already with Octopus, by all means, use the Octopus referral code at the end of the video and you'll get £50 credit and I'll get £50 credit. So everyone's a winner. So yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and uh, bye for now.